Teams regrouped at the Rakai Gorge Bridge for the start of the rescheduled Day 3 of competition. Race director Tony Ewan explaining his concern about the conditions on the Taramakau that brought about the change. We had some reports about the condition of the river, although it's flowing very nicely, there are some rocks and boulders up there that we're very concerned about. By 11am, John Derry was rocketing off downstream. Mike Pooley followed one minute later, but he wasn't closing the gap on the big green machine. Cameron Moore, on the other hand, was closing in on Pooley, although the fastest piston-powered race boat would be unlikely to close the more than six-minute gap overall. Roger Preston continued his ride back up the leaderboard from 16th to 5th outright yesterday. Preston and son had their sights on the back of 4th placed K-Jet and hauled in the other father and son team, Sean and Joseph Kelly, before the State Highway Bridge. But in true Preston style, their ride wasn't without its moments as they strived to make up lost time. We uh, took 45 seconds to get off the start line, uh, couldn't get on the plane. Uh, once we got going, we got a um, head in the groove and had a pretty good run past Sean. And um, yeah, really had a bit of gravel in the bottom half, but managed to get in. We're just racing for a class place to try and get on the podium, and um, we're slowly moving up the field, or moved up a lot yesterday. Um, hopefully, we might pick off another one or two. Cleve Cockshorn was back in the news today, flying downstream hard on the tail of Craig Robinson. With the two boats from the same Formula class, passing is always difficult, but today it seemed even harder. Yeah, caught up to another boat again and uh, went to go past them, got hosed down and cut the corner and there's a big banky shelf and yeah and then we we're looking at the sky for quite a while and landed and managed to get past them clean run down it's good pushing hard of course robinson might not have seen cockshorn before he took to the sky but he did witness the aerobatics it looked impressive yes he had a, a shelf and it stood right up on its back and thought he was going to land a knife but no he kept it straight and yeah lucky very lucky we had a good top half and the first uh, bit below the bridge was quite good but then we sort of got sucked over to the left North Bank and um, yeah, it was very um, tricky over there. So a bit of jet sprinting here and there. Ryan Rogers was also flying. The American making good time downstream in a river many consider one of the trickiest to negotiate in the world. Experience and that river just uh, blew us away. I mean, you're, I, I think the bearings are wore out in the steering shaft. It, uh, they've never turned and pushed, pushed and banged more gravel bars than in 47 miles in my life. But it, it was boat. My navigator did an awesome job, and we, we didn't run aground and had a blast. I mean, it was. Uh, that's why we come out to New Zealand and, and try to get better and better each time we come. So we're competitive in the World Championship that's coming in a few years. The CX leader, Jason Young, began strongly, but things started to unravel for Young when the exhaust let go in the back. It's on a big noise in the back, and, and, uh, and then the noise went out. Um, yes, yeah, so he a set of headers fell off, and then went down and nursed out the electrics and turned us off, and then unfortunately he shot us around into a little bit of a narrow gut, which we had to push through for quite a while. He made the finish, but outside the cutoff time and his chances of a class win were handed on a platter to Callum McKenzie. Clean running was McKenzie's objective, but things weren't going to plan for him either. Coming down all right, right past us, he was in front of us and I was sort of, sort of trying to straighten line a bit to get catch back up with him, but then just wrong option. Made 360 decisions, got one wrong and um, just ran out of water, so yeah. But, it, but Chase is in the same predicament, so happy days. 
clean boating, clean boating. Mackenzie's grounding meant he missed the cutoff too. Jason Young would remain in charge of the class. As we discovered on day two, Brendan Crowley's jet ski powered race boat is raising eyebrows. Its agility by now well proven, even if the 16 foot race boat is being outpaced by A-class leader Justin Hill. Today though, its speed wasn't to be underestimated as CX driver Wayne Boys discovered. Yeah, so Brick was the one who was stuck down uh, when we jumped out of yesterday. Um, we are coming down the Rakaia and you know, we've got the smallest boat with the smallest motor and we managed to, to pull him in. He wouldn't let us pass for a little while, I don't, don't know if, whether they were looking back or not, but um, we got up right next to them and they did, they seen us so they let us go. Um, and we're just absolutely stoked, we've got this tiny little boat, tiny little motor and, and we just caught a 525 horse V8. Once again, John Derry was the big winner of the first leg of the day. The shorter second leg back to the main road bridge appeared little effort to a driver who has claimed more NZ1 titles than any other. Mike Cooley struggled, his gas turbine still down on power. Add in the difficulty of negotiating the river entrance from the lagoon and it was little wonder he got swallowed up from behind by Cameron Moore, determined to chase down second outright. finishing the day in fourth outright, dropping K-Jet a place to fifth. Mike Pooley will be hoping his turbine issues won't offer more places to his opposition for the final day of competition on the Waimaka Riri. Yeah, we're not quite sure, Paul, it's, whether it's fuel or something. We only, we're back down to 80 miles an hour coming up, but we just think it's a fuel problem and we'll have a play on the Waimaka with it. We'll get ready for tomorrow.